Today I'm going to be sharing with you my teaching samples out of my portfolios. I have these large, almost leatherette uh, looking portfolios that have all my samples from 30 years of art education. And today I'm going to focus on portraits. So we're all familiar with the face map and getting uh, students to do the correct proportions. Uh, and that's certainly uh, a valid way to approach uh, portraiture. But my uh, background is in choice-based uh, art education, so I'm going to show you a ton of samples of different ways that you can do portraits that may be more expressive um, or just more fun. Um, if there's a, a particular one you'd like me to do a full-blown lesson that you could present to your students, comment below and uh, I'll see what I can do about that. Um, but this is not, uh, this video is not about, you know, lessons for, you know, students, like I'm not presenting for students. This is for uh, art teachers so you can see the uh, variety of options you have with uh, portraiture. So um, obviously one you could do is uh, the grid portraits um, is kind of a fun one. I have students take photographs of themselves and then I just print them off my black and white printer. I sometimes will print grids first on the paper and then run it through a second time with their photograph. I bring in props. Uh, I collect them over the years, stuff I find at flea markets or friends donate or even students donate for a little extra credit point. And then they go into bins and we pull that out when we do uh, portraits or figure drawings so that they can wear a costume. So this can be a little bit more expressive of who they are. Now you don't have to use props just with grid drawings or anything like that. Even the younger students will certainly appreciate wearing you know, a costume of some kind and then drawing each other, which can be an awful lot of fun. So we have the standard uh, you know, proportion drawing here and then the uh, larger grid drawing here. We focused on uh, tone for this particular one, but I have done this with color or leaving it black and white. Depends on time and materials. You can also do a simplified version of a drawing of a face and then play with color as an expressive thing. So we can talk about our warm and cool colors. So here's one with the face in normal colors and then using cool colors uh, for our extra, like the hair uh, and the shirt. And then here's one where we're really playing with the, uh, the colors in the facial features uh, and all over the place. So it's up to you to, you know, how much you want to limit that. Colors can be expressive. Colors can talk about mood. I have that in a video called The Emotional Color Wheel and you can take a look at that for more information. And that's one you can present to your students. It's a full-blown lesson introduction. Here's another one where I have my older students play with uh, Chinese brushes. So we get a lot of line variety and you can see I'm able to do that. So we do the drawing first in pencil, then we go over it and play with uh, calligraphic lines and then uh, color that in with watercolors. Here's another one where you actually do kind of a diary entry around your face, talk about some sort of uh, aspect of your history and you can see as you get up close uh, we got lots of words and those become the contours and then I did a realistic drawing inside. For our little ones, um, it can be kind of fun to play with a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill. So you can find these online and you can print it out on 11 by 17 paper. It'll run through a, uh, a photocopier and then the students can do their portrait in the middle so they get to be the, uh, the focus of the, of the dollar bill. Um, I've also done things where we've done line drawings and then blow watercolor ink on them. So they pick colors and uh, ways of kind of blowing it that show off their attitude. So here's one of my class clowns and one of my students. She is very shy but very creative and she was talking about how she has all these thoughts kind of blowing through her head but she keeps them to herself. So they can be very expressive and they're kind of fun to look at. So it's just a straw and watercolors. You lay the watercolors on the edge and give them a blow. Another one for my littles, um, doing portraits, and then they do symbols overlapping their face and the background. So this is, you know, an apple for a teacher, a brush because I teach art, a plane because I like to travel. And where the shape is inside the body, you draw the body. And where the shape is outside the body, you draw um, the shape. So the apple is red and the green leaf outside the body, but inside the body is the blue shirt. So that's kind of fun to get this uh, positive and negative space uh, sort of talked about with your students. Here's another one. You can use um, CDs as a reflective material and then go ahead and draw your hand holding the CD. Uh, this one we were pushing our students with um, doing cross hatching uh, and then just a little bit of color in the CD, though they could certainly color in the face in the CD as well. 
Another one I've seen, I'm certainly not the first one to do this, is um, you know, taking the Tim Burton proportions and doing a self-portrait with that and maybe an expressive background. Another one, I love doing uh, blind portraits. I think they're very expressive and fun. Um, and then to realistically try to paint them in becomes a real challenge and you get some interesting results. So I have two examples of ones that I did as teaching samples with the students in the classroom. So the lines were drawn in pen directly and blindly and then I colored it in with watercolors realistically. I mean fairly realistically, it's very illustrative. Uh, and here's another student in that same class. So again, very blind, we get those nice active sort of lines. Uh, and then, you know, just hints of color uh, as best we can to kind of tie it together. I think those come out really wonderfully expressive. Um, you can also take the grid drawing idea and then create a warped grid. And I have a video on my blog about, well, not a video, but there's on my blog is a whole entry and uh, lesson on that um, called warped grids. So you can surf artedguru.com and warped grids. It'll come right up. So I did a self-portrait on a warped grid, so it comes out kind of twisted that way. If you look close, you can still see the grid sort of hiding in there. Um, so really fun to do and not hard to do. I could do this with uh, middle and high school um, and it's fun and kind of challenging instead of just using Photoshop. Now you could warp an image in Photoshop and then put a regular grid on it and grid it over. That actually might be easier. This is challenging, but um, I find it a lot of fun and my students do well. The last one is um, unusual. You take uh, a large paper and you layer it. So you get a, you know, your, your drawing paper and then underneath the drawing paper you layer in some newspaper, some foil, some, I don't know, wrapping paper, whatever you can get. If you can get four or more layers and then you staple those layers together all the way around just on the edge and then draw a portrait on there. Um, it should be linear um, and fairly simple, almost as simple as this. Then what you do is you get another plain paper on the side and you start cutting up your drawing and then each layer uh, you can put on the new piece of paper or you can save them and then each layer then makes its own portrait. So you could see that the same image is repeated four times because I had four different layers uh, underneath it. One of the layers, you know, newspaper, foil, black paper, uh, you know, wallpaper kind of stuff that I had available. So this may have had six different layers, but I had my students, my advanced students, do four portraits out of that. For my younger students, I would have had them just do one and you put the pieces back together as a puzzle. It's sometimes nice to go back with pen and kind of make, make things sort of pop out again. Um, so the, the pen is actually the original drawing, so you cut up the original drawing as well. So some of the original drawing ends up in the, um, in the final image. So those are different ways that you can kind of attack or do uh, portraiture. I hope you found those interesting. Again, uh, just comment below if you feel that one of them, hey, you'd really like to have a lesson on that and maybe I can do a full-blown lesson uh, on YouTube where you could present it to your students and then they could go ahead and uh, do this lesson so that everyone comes up with a, def, uh, a different and unique expressive uh, work of art. Uh, if you found this to be helpful, go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. It's very helpful. Thanks so much.